Democracy means that we have to keep on, that we have to get engaged all the time. If you give up, then the other side will win. Then we have much more mass surveillance as uh, we have when we fight against it and try to stop it. Yeah, last spring we published internal budget plans of our interior secret service, the Bundesamt für Verfassungsschutz in Germany. And these budget plans showed that uh, two years after the start of the Snowden revelations, the answer of our secret services and our government was to see the revelations as a white paper and to step up on uh, internet surveillance and tracking um, social media. Three uh, months later, we found out that uh, the general prosecutor started investigations on treason against us and our sources. So we faced with two minimum years in prison up to life long sentence, which was totally crazy for committing treason. You must have the motivation to violate the Federal Republic of Germany. What was your motivation? And our motivation was the opposite. Our motivation to, was to raise a public debate whether the, our secret services are behaving in an unconstitutional way or not. So we, our motivation was to have a better society, a better Federal Republic of Germany where our civil rights are strong and uh, accepted by our secret services. Yeah. We uh, report a lot about repressive regimes who go with prison after journalists and bloggers in other parts of the world. And then to find out that it is possible, theoretically possible, to go after us with and send us to prison for just doing our work as journalists was, yeah, it was a bit disappointing uh, for us with a strong belief in civil rights and democracy. So you were accused of uh, treason, but why did the government stop uh, this accusation for a short time later? It became a huge scandal. We had a lot of solidarity from other newspapers, journalists and civil society in Germany worldwide. And after five days, the general prosecutor was fired. After 10 days, uh, the uh, charges were dropped because uh, as we found out later, the half of the government was involved in the investigations against us and they uh, lied uh, to the public. Nobody wanted to be responsible for the charges. Do you think, was there a loss of pre press freedom in Germany with this case? Press freedom won. The state went after us and <laughs> the whole solidarity uh, stopped this uh, getting after us. And it was clear during this debate that press freedom is for many people and for many organizations a very important thing. Yeah. But through the investigations and through lots of legal questions we asked ourselves, we found out that we need uh, an update for our press freedom laws because we don't think that our press freedom laws are strong enough as they could be. One example, it's not modern that only people uh, have press freedom who are working full-time or most of the time as journalists. When you take a look outside, uh, the whole media environment is changing. A lot of bloggers are now doing a very important job uh, in their free time. Uh, and if they work uh, journalistic or in a journalistic way, uh, then they need, uh, should have the same protection as journalists. Do you think that working in a network as a journalist is the future of journalism? For us it's the future and it's one future of journalism. For example, if um, you receive big data sets, you need lots of people to work with these big data sets as journalists. You need hackers. We know lots of experts, not only hackers but also lawyers who help us when we are in trouble. In your blog you write often about the mass surveillance uh, since the Snowden revelations. But do you think that since uh, summer 2013, since the Snowden revelations, that there has changed something in the political sphere? The debate changed a lot, especially in Germany, because now half of the public and half of our politicians are against 
this system of mass surveillance. The problem is that there's another half of society and uh, most of the poli politicians in power believe it's a good thing that we have ma ma much more mass surveillance. But we can have a debate now. And as I understand, there are not many countries outside of Germany where you have a very strong debate around mass surveillance. And especially we have an inquiry committee in our German parliament, the Deutsche Bundestag, where since two years uh, a lot of scandals around our own secret services are coming out. The problem is that um, our government um, just wants to legalize all these illegal things, what the uh, secret services are doing. So there might not be any changes, but at least a debate. You said that there's an inquiry committee in the Bundestag. Uh, it was, uh, in my opinion, the first one worldwide uh, in the parliament. Uh, can you elaborate what they had figured out until today? This inquiry committee in the Deutsche Bundestag was established to do a, a deep investigation on what NSA and co are doing. But now, most of the, uh, the time, the inquiry committee is taking a look what our own secret services are doing and they found out also through lots of uh, media reporting and investigative uh, work of journalists that our own secret services are totally deep in bed with NSA and co. And there are lots of unconstitutional um, projects and ways how our own secret services do mass surveillance. Lots of people are frustrated that nothing changes and it, it's n unfortunately not the most important topic for a lot of people who uh, have problems finding a job or keeping their jobs, higher rents for your apartment and all the social questions we are facing in the moment. And then it's especially a big problem to show how everybody is infected by the system of mass surveillance while psychologically lots of people don't really feel they are affected because they are not sent to prison or have other problems now. And the problem with the whole mass surveillance is that, yeah, uh, there might be, uh, the danger might be in the future. Uh, last autumn there was a, a big law you discussed on netspolitik.org, the data retention. Um, it was implemented in Germany again. We had that two times before. Um, can you elaborate what is allowed now by this law? Yeah, the data retention was a big red line for us as a uh, civil society uh, where the state crossed this red line to store everybody's communication data with whom we are communicating, uh, with whom we are telephoning, with whom we are emailing and where our um, handys are, especially smartphones, so the location data is stored. Or oh, it was stored six months. Then uh, our the Constitutional Court decided in 2010 that it's illegal. Then uh, the European Directive on Data Retention from 2005 uh, was uh, named illegal by the European Court of Justice in 2014. But after the Snowden revelations, where we found out that NSA and co are doing a huge global data retention, it was reintroduced with a lower level of um, uh, keeping the data. So now um, I said telephone, um, um, uh, communication da data is being stored for um, uh, 10 weeks and location data where our smartphones are is being stored for um, four weeks. Which uh, still means that everybody is not innocent anymore uh, because they still keep that um, uh, data at the USBs, at the telecommunication companies from everyone. And can you um, explain the differences of the German data retention to other European countries, for example, the UK, I don't know. Yeah, in other countries, uh, data retention uh, or the data is being stored longer, but it's just a matter of time until it will be stored longer in Germany. Uh, we haven't had uh, a huge uh, terror uh, plot in Germany in the last years, but uh, will yeah. might come one. You only need one crazy person uh, with a bomb uh, to create this. And then uh, lots of politicians will talk about that we need a longer uh, data retention and we need uh, to store much more data than we do now. An argument for the uh, data retention is always, oh, we don't uh, store the the content of communication, we only store with whom we are communicating. But through this information, you will find out a lot of things about people. 
for what kind of things we are interested. When we are going to, and you can do predictive policing on who will be, will be met tomorrow and who we have met uh, based on the data who we, we've met in the past. Is this the era of uh, growing mass surveillance? Yeah, unfortunately, it's the era of uh, growing mass surveillance. But on the one thing, we have technology. We can get stronger encryption. We can get better, more trustworthy systems. We need them. We need open hardware. We need free software. We need stronger encryption. And we need more people being engaged in this political debates. Lots of people say, oh, I was demonstrating in the past, nothing changed. Democracy means that we have to keep on, that we have to get engaged all the time. Or sometimes you have a new job or you can't do it, but uh, if you give up, then the other side will win. And uh, then we have much more mass surveillance as uh, we have when we fight against it and try to stop it. Journalists often are on the side of the fanatical protection of copyright, which is absurd because the duty of artists and, and journalists is to spread the information as much as, as possible.